I, you know, I'll just tell you. I mean, I don't know. Uh, are there any brass players out here? No. Okay. What do you play? I play trumpet. And you? Trumpet. Trumpet. And I uh, have trumpet. Trumpet. All right. Well, what I do is I I like to play with different sounds. So I just for this just for the excuse us just for the trumpet players. I use like four different mouthpieces. That's a standard, what you call a 7th C. And then another mouthpiece, which is a, a copy of a mouth. Anybody ever hear of Charlie Shavers? Or um, Harry James? Well, this is kind of like the kind of mouthpiece they use, which has two cups in it. And it's a little bit brighter. And when I'm playing, when I'm playing in a combo, if I don't want to play anything high, you know, if I, if, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older than I was when I was your age, right? <laughs> I'm 70 years old now. Wow. So in order for me to have a high register, I can't use the kind of physical effort that say he can, or you can, or you can, on the trumpet. <coughs> So I, have, I had to figure out an easier way to do it, which means a smaller mouthpiece. So I went to this. Is what I'm doing okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it, I improvise, that's what I do. So I'm improvising this. And I'm warming up trickily in the same time. <laughs> but. sound but if I try to go you know it's pretty hard to play up there I can if I wanted to push it but this one almost as pretty not quite but almost as pretty and a lot more projection so if I was playing this ballad and there was a big band behind me there's no question I would use this mouthpiece even if I was younger with what I've learned about it I do because because everyone even though sometimes people come and hear me play and they say you know Lou you sound the same on all your mouthpieces it makes me feel different like one like this makes me want to play like like the, the famous man who's the great to me the greatest trumpet player who ever lived Louis Armstrong Louis Armstrong and Dizzy Gillespie and, um, and Roy Eldridge, who were big influences on me. And then the, the and, and there's a way to make it sound okay, but like for this, Mouthpiece and the way Lewis played in the in the end, in uh, not the end, but in the in the late fifties. If you watch him, if you watch a video of him, you know he must have been playing something like this, because he's playing stuff like. effort because these mouthpieces are made to do that and then and then I and then when I when when I get on a gig like with John Faddis and Terrell Stafford and it's time to play a ballad and we've all already done the screaming and stuff like that of course John an octave, an octave above all of us <laughs> but this is a French horn mouthpiece inside a, a thank you <laughs> And then I'll be alive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Anywhere. Thank you.
Thanks, man. All right, no problem. <laughs> to me, the greatest sousaphone player in the world is that man. <laughs> Never heard anything like that in my life. Never. Of course, I've never heard another sousaphone player. No. no. Good coffee. Tuba, tuba sousaphone, whatever you want to call it. So on this one horn, I can play all those different colors kind of like a painter. So I like it. It's, it's like toys. They're toys. And I, and I enjoy crossing them over, you know, so. The trumpet is in the back. But right now, I'm going to play one mouthpiece on this and try to warm up with it. So show up. Yeah. The trumpet is in the Bible, right? The trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not expert on that book. 